All right, if you've probably seen part two, you've seen part one of the tutorial where we showed you how to add that basic animation. Now we're going to show you how to create that template in the covering, if you will, in Photoshop. So we're going to go ahead and create that here, and it's actually fairly simple. It took me a little bit of a workaround to figure out how to do it, but um, I think this is probably one of the best solutions to do unless you want to build it in PowerPoint. Okay, so. First of all, I'm going to create a, just create a new slide. And I'm going to keep this blank. Now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go File, Save As. And we're going to go ahead and call this, save it as a PNG file. And I'm going to call this Template. Okay, and when it comes up in PowerPoint and say every slide or current slide, just say current slide. Now let's go into Photoshop. We're going to bring in that image and we're going to use that as our template. Here's a template already made um, in Photoshop and I'm going to show you how I did this and you can download this right from our website as well with the source files for this tutorial. So you can use it and manipulate it any way you want and please feel free to use any of this stuff uh, for your own use. Okay, let's go ahead and just close this or minimize it and let's go ahead and open and let's get that image, the template image. And this is what we're going to use our style. Now the first thing I'm going to want to do here is this. I'm going to create a new layer. We're going to call this frame. And really the frame size is really up to you. I mean you can go with the standard size but the frame is actually going to be smaller than the image because we want to give it that, that movement feel to it within a TV screen. That's the best way to describe it. So with the frame, I'm going to go ahead and grab the rectangular marquee, marquee tool. And I'm going to come up here and create my TV box or my projector. I think that's the best way of putting it. So let's just go about that size. Now, depending if you want... Uh, room on top or on the bottom here for text like maybe you want to put your title up here You can do that, but I'm gonna put my title right within the screen. So I want this actually fairly large So I'm gonna go a little larger And I'm gonna go something like that. That looks good now With this selected on its own layer. I'm gonna go up to edit stroke and I'm gonna go ahead and pick white as my color here and I want to stroke around six pixels. And center is fine. And we're good. I'm going to go ahead and deselect those marching ants. So select, deselect, or control D. So far, we're looking pretty good here. Now, here's kind of a tricky part. We want to add a shadow to this. Now, probably the quickest way you may want to do this, go to frames and come down here to the FX and add a drop shadow. Well, the problem with doing this I'm going to actually move the shadow down here. I can actually move the shadow either by using the angles here or actually just coming in and dragging this around. The problem with doing it this way is I'm going to have a shadow that's going to actually appear over my image here. So it doesn't quite work. So we're going to do something else. I'm going to go ahead and delete that. I'm going to actually get my magic wand tool and I'm going to select with inside the frame. Now I'm going to go ahead, grab my bottom layer add another layer and fill it with black. So go down here, go to the default colors, make sure black, take the paint bucket tool, fill those with black. Look how easy that was. And I'm going to deselect. Now what I'm going to do is grab my selection tool up there. I'm just going to go ahead and use my arrow keys here. I'm going to drop the shadow. I'm going to go off a little bit to the left and down an angle. So if you see here, I've got the black kind of coming out here like it's a shadow. Now we're going to go ahead and go to filter and we're going to add a Gaussian blur. And 6.5 works for me. And now I'm going to drop the opacity of that to maybe about 37. That looks good. But we still have this box here. So what we're going to do is go back up to our frame now, get our magic wand tool one more time. We are going to select inside the frame. Now select the shadow. In fact, I'm just going to rename this layer shadow. 
and I'm going to hit the delete key. Now, I just deselected my marching ants. Now I have the shadow constrained just outside it. Now we need to go ahead and get rid of the blue in here so we can have our, uh, so we can see our image. We're going to do the same thing with the frame. Go back up to the frame. But before we do that, actually, go down to the, the layer here, the background layer. I'm going to call this background. And I'm going to add a mask to this. This way I can always come back and use this over and over. So I'm going to go ahead and add a mask to it. Now go back up to my frame, select it, select inside that, come back down, select the mask on the background layer, not, not the background, but the actual mask. So that's selected. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this with black. And what I've just done is if I want to come back later on and resize this, I can do it and I don't have to start over again. So by using a mask, you can always undo that. So I'm going to go ahead and deselect by using my shortcut key this time, control D. And there we have it. Now I did some other things in my image. I just can't remember this. What I did in my original is I came down and just added this just kind of for some visuals. This is something that's totally optional. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but let me go ahead and show you how I did that. So I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to go ahead in here and select my rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to just create a square across here. And let's fill that with, let's do something a little bit different this time. Let's kind of go with the brown. And I may not like that, but let's take a look at it. There we go. Deselect that. And what I'm going to do now is, is to free transform. So if I go to edit, free transform, it selects it. But if I right click on it now in CS3, and hopefully you can see it down here, we're going to go ahead and select the warp. And all I'm going to do here is kind of with the warp tool, kind of bring this up, use these anchors, and just kind of bring this down like that. And if I don't like the color, I can certainly just select it and choose, let's say, maybe a teal. And again, just fill it. And I'm going to do another little trick here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate this layer. So we're going to call this swoosh. One, I'm going to duplicate this layer by dragging it down to the layers palette. And this time I'm going to go up, do a free transform again. So edit, free transform. And if you right click on it, we want to go ahead and flip this. And it's kind of off the screen here. Unfortunately, it's low. So when you right click, look for flip horizontal. And what it did now is it take the same image and it flipped it. But what I'm going to do now with this image is, is I'm going to drop the opacity. And now I'm going to bring it back down. And it just adds a different effect. And in fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and take my swoosh one and just drop that just a hair as well. Not a lot. So I have two different colors here. That's looking good. Let's go ahead and save this now as a PNG file. So save as. Make sure you come down here and select the PNG file. And we're going to call this new teal. And there it is. Let's go into a PowerPoint and see what this looks like. All right, we're in PowerPoint. Now, one of the first things we're going to have to do here is we're going to need to make this image larger than it is. So I'm just going to go and grab a corner and kind of go edge to edge here a little bit. I want it to be a little bit bigger because we have a mask for it now. And that's what we're going to do with that image we just made in Photoshop. Because now we're going to go ahead and insert it, insert, picture, and look for a new teal. And you know, right off the bat, it inserted perfectly. What PowerPoint does when you insert an image, if the image is larger than the actual slide, it actually resizes it so it fits within the PowerPoint image, which is kind of slick. Now, if we test this, look at this. It's working perfect. So now if we want to go insert, and we're going to go ahead and text, and I'm going to click up here and call this Realistic training. Change it to white. And let's go ahead and increase it a little bit, the size. And I'm going to actually use that teal as kind of a backdrop for this. So now 
And maybe I even want to add a drop shadow to that, so I'll do that as well. And now, actually, I may like this a little bit over here. Yeah, that looks worse for me. Anyway, you kind of get the idea of how we did this. And you can play with this, and you can do a lot of different things. And, of course, you can change the colors of this within Photoshop. So I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. Now, the fact of the matter is, this took a little time to set up. But in the future, it's going to get much easier because if you're going to do this a few times in a PowerPoint presentation, you can reuse these slides. Let me show you one other neat attribute which I did not show you before. I'm going to go ahead and bring this over here. You know, we took a lot of times to set up the animation. Well, this is one of the cool things. I'm just going to delete this for now. Let me just bring in another image. Insert, picture, and let me go up here and just grab something. Oh, let's grab something from my motion tutorial. I'm going to bring this in here. So let's say I want to do this with this. So I'm going to bring it onto the same slide as this. I'm going to select the original slide, go up to animation, so that original slide with the animation selected, I'm going to go up here and choose Animation Painter. So if I select that, I'm going to get a little paintbrush here, and if I click on the new image, it's going to apply those attributes to that image. So now, if I bring this here, and it looks good. In fact, let's just go ahead and do this real quick. Insert image again. We'll go ahead and drop down and get that teal. That's looking good. I'm going to take this, bring it over here, do the same thing. Now, we click and play. We have just added an animation to that. Then you can come, come in here and actually adjust some of these animations if it doesn't quite work with this particular image. One last thing here. Um, if you find that your logo is a little distorted, if I close this, my logo got a little distorted here, bringing it back in from Photoshop. Well, the beauty of this is I actually created this in, you know, I brought this into PowerPoint. So if I go to View and I go to Slide, master go to my original slide i can actually grab these things just for that slide close this and bring it in here and just place it up here if i need to do that if you find any distortion in your image bring it back in well there you go so pretty slick again it's just something slightly different than bringing in a photo and doing your standard animation. Here's something that just kind of has a nice, subtle animation that adds a nice professional look to your presentation. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, if you have any comments, suggestions, or you want to see something, please let us know, and we'll see what we can do about it. Until the next time, hope you always find unique ways to make your presentation more editable. Take care.